Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectibles New York Comic Con exclusive Mortal Kombat Ninja Rain. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, do I like this figure. Uh, the pinkish purple is just gorgeous. It looks so nice, it's so saturated, and it's such a stark contrast to the solid black and or skin tone rest of the figure. I, I don't have a particular fondness for pinkish purple in general, but on this guy, I love it. It looks great. I can't wait to get my shelf of Mortal Kombat ninjas situated. It just looks great. Otherwise, it's the same figure as the ones we've already seen. A couple new accessories and really good QC. So there's not going to be a ton to talk about, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So let's get him off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just, just about 17 and a half centimeters, which makes him just about... Just shy of 7 inches, so pretty good size to him. Not truly 112 scale. I'm not sure why they went with that. I don't think we've talked about that in a while, so I might as well do it. It's odd. It's advertised and even listed on the box as being 112 scale, but he's almost 7 feet tall if that's the case, and it shouldn't be, so that's a little strange. But still, gorgeous figures, and it's, they're making enough figures on their own that the scaling is good enough to be combined with their own figures rather than other people, so that's okay. Uh, this guy's gorgeous. Like I said, the pinkish purple is just so saturated and vibrant. I love it. I love it. I love it. The face mask is a little bit less saturated simply because of the dry brushing on it that stands out a little bit more, but really, really sharp looking figure. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same. Honestly, for the ninjas, if you swap out the shin pads, this part of the outfit and the face mask... Technically, the only real difference is the eye coloring, and that's not super obvious anyway, so there's not a whole lot to talk about otherwise. So let's go ahead and talk about the accessories. We have a bunch of different hands. We have the two fist hands that come out of the package, two karate chop hands, two gripping hands, one actual gripping hand for holding something, even though it doesn't serve him any purpose. We have two stylized hands, or style pose hands. We have one, uh, I guess, effect part hand, which is this translucent whitish clear plastic which is I guess supposed to be water the hands actually made out of that plastic and it's painted it's not painted perfectly but it does match and fit on the figure nicely so it's pretty good good enough we do have of course the interchangeable cloth face mask and then we have his lightning effect which is really nicely done in terms of the paint it's got some really nice pinkish purplish shading on there and I like the sculpt however it is a pain in the ass to peg these in uh, I'm going to try heating up the base piece to see if they peg in better that way, but I could barely peg them in. Uh, and then it doesn't quite sit perfectly flat on the shelf, but it does stand up, so it's good enough. It's a cool accessory once you get it working. It's just a real big pain in the ass. So be careful with it. You don't want to snap it off because it is relatively brittle plastic, so just be careful. But it does look cool, so I'll give them that. Uh, we'll run the articulation real quick, even though we've seen this, what, five? One, two, blue, yellow, green, black, gray... Red. Six times previously. I think I got them all. Anyway, double ball peg for the head. Moves around really well. Wonderfully. No problem at all. Except it gets a little gappy because of how low the peg fits into the head. I don't know if you can actually see that. Yeah, you can. If that was higher up, if the peg was longer, you could have the same range without having as much gapping. But it's still really good. No problems, really. So that's okay. This is still super flexible, so it'll move with the figure. Arms go all the way up. No problem at all. Full rotation. Does connect on a ball peg, so that gives you really good range like that. Bicep swivel is still good. This guy is just super, super buttery when posing. The, this one and Smoke are just by far the best examples of the ninjas. Very, very nicely done. Floating wrist guard thingy, still floaty. We have a ball peg for this joint where it moves around in the forearm. And then you have a hinge with a straight peg, obviously. So plenty of range for the wrists. No problems there. Double jointed upper torso. I think it's double. I still haven't taken one apart to confirm. Could be single. But either way, you get really good range out of it. Really, really good range. And this flexes nicely with the figure, so that's awesome. Uh, the lower torso has a single ball peg. Still good range out of that, too. Use them in conjunction, and you really shouldn't have any trouble posing this guy at all. Really, really nicely done. All this stuff is super flexible. This piece not as flexible, but you don't really need it to be because you can still bring the legs, like, as far up as you want to. Really, really well executed. And then all the way out to the side. Better than horizontal. That's great. Hey, looks like we have it twisted. 
So you want to be a careful, not careful necessarily, but pay attention to how you have these guys posed because if you rotate things around and then start moving stuff, you're going to end up with offset hips and things like that. And it'll end up looking weird and you'll be like, why does it look weird? And it's because your hips are not coming out of the same place on either side. So there, we kind of fixed that. Not, a, not something to actually fix technically, just to adjust. Now as far as posing the hips, really no problems. The only thing that's kind of tight on this guy is the thigh swivel, and that's not actually the thigh swivel. So you might have heard the clicking a second ago. What that is, is not the actual thigh swivel, which is relatively minimal. That was actually this socket that holds the leg onto the ball rotating, and that's why it was clicking. You don't actually need that to rotate, so that's fine. The knees work wonderfully. I don't know what they did. It's like almost like they went through the entire figure and then just cleaned everything up. All the joints are so much better than they have been occasionally in the past. Ankle hinge with the ball peg to bring the foot over the shin guard or to bring it back a little bit farther. That still works. Toe hinge is still questionable. And then we still have minimal range from that ball peg, but I'll be damned if these aren't some really great figures. I mean, they are just so well executed this time around. I don't know. I don't know what they did. I don't know. I was not expecting this. Usually molds get less effective as they go on, but apparently things are being tweaked well enough that these figures are getting better every time they get repainted. Not usual, but absolutely welcomed. I love it. Everybody who's complaining about repaints, you could sit on it because this is this is what we need in the Mortal Kombat line. How are you going to have a Mortal Kombat line without repainting ninjas? That's, that's what's up right there, dude. All right, very good figure. Definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching, guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like it because I do have new content like every day, all kinds of fun stuff like action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, sculpting, just tons of stuff. So make sure you come back for that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.